Gentlemen, hey, congratulations for Stray Dogs. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I actually watched this film not knowing what this film is all about, knowing that there probably was a dog, and I thought it was a family film, and uh, it is not wow. a family <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right out the gate, right? <laughs> yeah. I know when 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 you were talking about like you know like animal spirit and all this, kind of, I was thinking, like, okay, so this is a talking dog movie, and, <laughs> and then I realized no, it's far, far from a talking dog movie. Well, originally. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Adam Adam David, uh, tell us where the original idea came from uh, for for a film like this. You want to start, Adam? Sure. Um... <laughs> You know, uh, it, it's come from a lot of different sources. Uh, I wanted to make a film that took place outdoors and dealt with backpacking. And then we were also very inspired by Ida Lupino's The, the Hitchhiker, as far as having a small cast of three characters. I don't know if you're familiar with the film, but they pick up this hitchhiker who kind of worms his way in and then takes them hostage. And so that sort of, you know, dynamic where you have two brothers and then you're having to deal with this person who's infiltrated into the group and is now taking over. So that seemed like a great backdrop for an indie film and then to have it be set in the woods and be backpacking was the original inspiration. And then from there uh, we kind of took to more personal inspiration from our uh, own issues with our siblings and family dynamics. And so that's a big part of the story is the brother relationship. And then as far as the dogs, Dave, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so while we were writing the movie uh, and, and Adam was talking about brothers, like we both have brothers and I'm an older brother and he's a younger brother. So we were able to like play off that dynamic. But also while we were writing the movie, um, I had two dogs pass uh, of old age. So it wasn't like an accident or anything. But um, but I just, you know, thought like letting go is something that a lot of people have to uh, get used to. Sorry, there's a lot of noise right now. And um, and I thought it would be a good topic to touch on. And, and my two dogs passing, we figured if they're going to go into the woods, what's their reasoning? And uh, and I said, well, let, let them carry a dog, you know, to go bury it. And uh I thought that would be more interesting than the uh, typical spreading of ashes that's done in movies often. So mm -hmm. I thought it would be a, a, a more exciting angle. Of course. Skylar, how were you brought on board? Why did you want to do a movie like this? Um, I mean, we had made a short film before this because um, we're just, all three of us are into making movies and, and it's our passion. And we figured we could do a short film, we could do a feature film. So um, I, I know they'd been writing for years and years. So I trusted that they were gonna make a, you know, a dynamic story. And then when we went um, scouting, we went to the location, we went hiking and it was beautiful and it was very inspiring. And uh, the idea of just taking three weeks out of our year to film this and staying in a cabin together, it was just all, you know, uh, really interesting. And um, it, it turned out to be a, you know, a fun adventure film and the hiking on top of that got uh, some good exercise out of it. So that was fun. And, and now we met some really great people and some passionate filmmakers. So it was a great experience. Um, Skylar, do you know how frustrating your character Jeff is to me? Because I was relating <laughs> to Travis so much like I was like going, yeah. come on. <laughs> well, the, the first film festival we were part of, um, one of, one of the uh, judges came up to me and he says, you know what? I hated your character. I'm like, were you talking about my character or were you talking about the bad guy? He's like, no, your character. I hated your character because I have a brother and I identify. So, no, I, I, I definitely understand, especially watching it over and over again. I can see that he's, uh, he's, a, very, um, he's a very needy, kind of at times whiny person, but he's, he's passionate. You know, he's loving and caring and he just wants to have his relationship back with his brother and obviously is... Um, just a passionate human being, but no, I, I can understand that. Don't worry. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think it depends on your personality type. The uh, cinematographer, the reason that he came on the film is because he read the script and he really identified with Jeff. And so 
I don't know if that makes you not like the cinematographer now, but uh, <laughs> you know, I think it depends on you know who you were in your family and and what yeah, you view exactly. as far as the responsibility of an older sibling or yes, but he is definitely he's definitely needy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that that's a testament to uh, to basically how audiences can connect to the characters. So that's a, that's a success by by itself. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> now, of course, audiences will watch this movie, and it was raised in the, um, as a fact in the movie is, why did you film this in the winter? Are you guys crazy? I mean, <laughs> yes. what, what's wrong with the summer? Well, you know, like we're, for the summer, I'm just saying. <laughs> when I mentioned we went scouting, we went scouting in, what was it, October? Yeah. Right? And, you know, not any snow to be seen and we we're like oh this can be beautiful we'll shoot on that rock over there we'll shoot over there and then when we first you know went out there to officially look at it and there was snow on the ground i was like what was i why did i not think that because we we did a pre-backing trip you know um adam and tad and i in december and i was like i don't know why i thought there wasn't going to be snow we're up in elevation so it was kind of just happenstance that's when we needed to film this movie and we thought, you know, it could actually look pretty cool. And I think in the end, that was one of the benefits of the movie was that it was kind of a snowy scape and you wouldn't even see where the trails actually are. So it looked like we were in the middle of nowhere, but really we were in kind of a trailed area in a national park. So, Was this uh, near uh, Fraser Park? Is that where the location yeah. was? Yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I just, uh, it's just funny to me. It was every, every time I see a film that's filmed at Fraser Park, it's always cold and snowing. And then, and I wonder, like, how come people can't uh, film it during, during the summer or something like that? But I guess it's just dry or hot, too hot or something like that. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we work in the film industry too. And so we knew that we were going to have a gap between different shows that we were going to be working on. And so it was like, all right, we're going to, shoot in this gap no matter what so that's what the weather was and so we quickly incorporated it into the story and felt like it only strengthened the story because of how much harder it made the journey for these characters and it made it more of an improbable thing to do to go out and bury this dog and so that i don't know i feel like it almost became its own character in the film having to deal with the elements like that. and one upside was we were able to use a sled to carry all of our equipment <laughs> up the trails you know we wouldn't yeah. have been able to do that if it was uh, during the summer so. yeah <laughs> was was it uh, definitely much uh, more difficult to, uh, on this production how many days was it that you guys had to be out there at this part it was 18 days and it was definitely very difficult the first couple of days we had uh, some sleet and so having to stand in the snow and you're wet and it's cold and you know you get in about three four hours of shooting and then you got to go back into the vehicles and try to warm back up and then go back out and shoot some more so that was uh that made it harder you know there's a scene where you know i get you know, they attempt to drown me in the film. You probably got to that part. And so that, uh, you know, I almost got hypothermia doing that. <laughs> and uh, that was a that scary moment for sure. <laughs> I know that that's the part that you should have said, we, we should rewrite this part. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the face in the that. snow would have been suffice, right? Yeah. yeah. Drown me in a Yeah. yeah. Um, Adam, I know we know that this is your feature film directorial debut, which is, which is terrific for you, which is also a hard thing to do. But you also had to act in your own movie. What 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 were you drinking at the time? Well, <laughs> you know, I make I make some moonshine, so probably a little bit of moonshine and some <laughs> other things. Um, well, as an indie filmmaker, you have to use all of your resources that are at your disposal. And so, you know, Dave ends up acting in the film, you know, Skylar is the lead in the film, but he is also an editor and, you know, did a bunch of visual effects and a lot of other things. And so knowing if I act in the film, 
that's one less person that we have to hire. And so <laughs> that was thing. part of, yeah, that was, money was the main issue. I, yeah, it's definitely not ideal, but you, you just go for it and just try to make your film no matter what it takes. Most excellent. And Skylar, you did your own stunts in this film, which is a, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. I want yeah. to remark about uh, how dangerous was it uh, you running down hill and that how Adam managed to cut himself out of that scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just happened to take the shortcut. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, uh, you know, honestly, that was one of the more fun days. Um, but you're right. It could have turned out really bad. I'm glad it didn't. Um, one of our favorite shots in the movie is when there's a, a fallen down tree kind of under, you know, over a, a little like creek bed or gully. And Adam was like, you know, we're going to film up here. You guys just run down and, you know, get under the tree. And we hadn't done like a rehearsal go. We were just like, all right, well, you know, if these characters are running through, how would they get under the tree? And it just turned out like the best way to do it is drop one leg and slide under and Tab is right behind me. He did the exact same thing. And we're like, oh, that was cool. Let's shoot from the other side. So it was kind of just a thing where we ran and hoped we didn't break our legs and hoped <laughs> we didn't hurt ourselves. And it ended up being all right. I have a little like thing that was still taking a, you know, it's almost, it's almost done healing from like a little, uh, a cacti thing that stabbed me at one yeah. point, but that was the, the biggest wound. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and the music, um, in, in this film, was it all you, Adam, or? Uh, we had a composer, uh, Jason Dunn, that, uh, I would have, uh, worked with through a lot of, uh, sessions of trying to figure out what was right and what sounded right with, with the film but uh jason halogen yeah he did a great job and yeah he goes by two names so that's why yeah sorry i get it confused uh but uh yeah you know at this point i can't imagine you know a lot of the scenes are without his score because it you know captures i think part of the feeling of being out alone in nature, but at the same time, the excitement that comes in a lot of the moments. So, yeah. And emotion too. Yeah. That, that is great. Well, let me wrap it up with uh, one last question here because we began talking about dogs and how thought we thought this is a dog movie, but there is a dog in the movie, which is, uh, which uh, according to the credits, is the dog with no name, but the real dog is Squirrel. Talk about squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel's kind of great. Like it, like we looked at um, getting uh, professional dogs, and uh, they're really expensive. You have to pay for like two handlers, so the cost can add up. I think it was going to be like eight thousand, ten thousand dollars. So we decided to put an ad on Craigslist, and uh, we showed up to a park. And uh, April, uh, the dog owner, she's like jump in his arms. The dog like ran full speed, jumped up into Adam's arms. You know, it's just like play dead, lay, play dead, lay down, do all this stuff. And the dog just did everything. It was just a match made in heaven, so to speak. <laughs> wow, that's excellent. Well, hey, gentlemen, hey, congratulations once again for Stray Dogs. It's a it's a thriller, not a family film. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you. you guys done done a wonderful uh, job in this movie. And I can't wait for everyone to check it out. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you. Bye now.